Hey, so we have a lot of mason jars here for keeping dry goods and such, and since they look pretty nice lined up like this, I figured I'd make an open pantry for them, and I decided to do it within the thickness of the wall. Let me show you how I did it. This room was an addition done about 25, 30 years ago, so when I cut away the drywall here, the first thing I found was the old exterior of the house that they just drywalled over when they did the addition. Um, other than that, there's some slats here that are just being used to hold the drywall. Um, and then inside the cavity of the wall here, there's this insulation and then some 2x4 studs every 16 inches. My shop vac came with this filter bag, which I never use, but I figured this was a good time to use it because I'll be in the kitchen and cutting away all that drywall is going to make a lot of dust and I'd like to keep it as much in one place as I can. Especially. The bag wraps around the inside of the canister in a kind of C-shape. I didn't really understand how this was supposed to be and it seemed weird to me. Seems weird to me. I did my best to score the perimeter of the drywall so as to keep an edge as clean as possible for when I was going to have to patch it up again. I made a light score line to establish the edge and then went through and cut much deeper to make the removal easier later on. I'm sure there's a better way to release the drywall here, but this works pretty well with the exception of a few places where I caused a little damage on the wrong side of the line. Then it was just a matter of peeling away all the waste drywall to reveal the exterior of the original house behind. So with a combination of a circular saw and a sawzall, I started hacking away at the cladding. Uh, I lost some footage here and demo is pretty boring anyways, so let's skip ahead to the next part. All right, now that we've got the drywall out and the siding of the house out and the insulation out, uh, one big thing that's come up is this, which is a diagonal member, which I assume is doing some structural work. So that's gotta stay. Uh, other than that, um, these studs here, I'm realizing are holding these slats on, which hold the plaster on the reverse side of the wall. So, unless I want to rip that all out and re-drywall the other side of the wall, which I don't, I'm gonna have to figure out a way around these studs. All right, I made it through the wall. Now I'm just gonna frame it out with this two by six. Uh, gonna have one on the bottom, one on either side, and one on the top, I think. Uh, just gonna level them out, shim them as needed, and then I'll have a nice clean box in which to put the cabinetry. I had designed the shelves for standard mason jar sizes, but I wanted to be sure of spacing, so I laid them out here. Then I cut the top, bottom, sides, and shelves for the unit from the same half inch hardwood plywood that I was using for the back. And now a very quick dado change. Uh, if at all possible, I want to put my dado stack in only once per project, and I managed to do that successfully this time. In real time, it takes about five minutes, which is basically an eternity. With the sacrificial fence set up, I'm running a rabbit around the back of the unit to accept the top, bottom, and sides. The back and the sides both have dados for the shelves, so I need to be sure they line up with each other. I cut a dado in the back with the sacrificial fence in place and then use the stop block of the same thickness as the fence to cross cut the dados in the sides so I wasn't cross cutting directly against the fence. Having all the dados cut in the back like this makes the glue up a lot easier. I think my biggest problem was that my assembly table is really just not big enough. The table saw is right there and my shop isn't big enough to have a second table 
for outfeed and for assembly. So I had to work around it a lot. And as you can see, I have to move the assembly table to make a gap to get a clamp in. But um, eventually it all worked out fine. I'm ripping down some poplar for the face frame. I wanted something that wouldn't move and could take a little abuse, but I didn't care much about the look because I'll be painting the whole project and also poplar is cheap. I couldn't think of a good way to get a spline into the center of these mitered corners because they're about four feet long and the ceiling in my shop is too low to do it on the table saw. So I ended up doing this joint, which I'm going to call a mitered floating lap joint. I'll be able to sand off any excess from that floating piece. And again, because I'm painting the project, it's okay. There's a couple of things that I didn't manage to get footage of, one of which is gluing the face frame onto the carcass of the cabinet. You can see it's glued on here. There are also small lips on the front of each shelf, also made of poplar, that I glued on. And here you can see I'm just flushing those up with the hand plane. I was so excited to get the unit into the wall that I forgot to film it, but you can trust me that I just put it in there and screwed it into the 2x6 framing. Overall, I'm really happy with the way it turned out, both as a storage solution and as a decorative element in the kitchen. Let me know what you think in the comments, and thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.